Support for Breaking the Barrier in today's episode is brought to you by the Nebraska Rural Radio Association. With 15 stations across the heartland, they are your go-to source for all things rural and agricultural. Whether you're a farmer, rancher, or just love the rural lifestyle, tune into one of the Nebraska Rural Radio Association stations for entertainment, news, and expert insights. Visit RuralRadio.com to find a station near you. Welcome to Breaking the Barrier, a Western Lifestyle podcast highlighting those breaking barriers both in and out of the arena. I'm your host, Rebel Seclocha, and today I am so thrilled to be joined by a true Western woman and a champion for agriculture. I'm visiting with none other than Taylor McNair. She's a law school graduate, currently serves as the State Affairs Coordinator for the Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation and Miss Rodeo America 2019. Taylor, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on, Rebel. So good to see you and be on your show. Taylor, you have an incredibly impressive resume, but before we jump into all the exciting things that you're doing, I'd love to know just a bit about your upbringing and where some of these seeds were planted. I grew up in one of the smallest towns in Mississippi. My dad was a farmer. My mom grew up working on the farm. And so it was really what I knew growing up. I didn't get off the farm too much until I found 4-H. 4-H was my avenue to really explore the world. It gave me so many opportunities across the state and across the world. And it really broadened my horizons to what was outside of small town learning Mississippi. Uh, Looking back, I wouldn't be who I was today without 4-H and without growing up on that farm. I actually still reside there. I have an hour commute to the big city every day to to my job with the corner office, Uh, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Those are my roots, and I'm really, really proud of that. I always had horses growing up, uh, but they weren't my first love. It was actually a cow. Uh, I was truly a cow girl. I grew up exhibiting market steers, and that was really what I loved. I loved uh, grooming these steers, looking at feed rations, um, and trying to exhibit the best steer each and every year. Later, I found high school rodeo uh, and really fell back in love with what I tinkered with when I was much younger. Uh, And that led me to becoming junior Miss Dixie National. And that was really a turning point in my life that that really changed everything. But I'll say it goes back to to the grassroots of living on a farm. Uh, Where I'm at today uh, truly is because of the hard work and uh, the skills that I learned living there in small town learning Mississippi. Absolutely. Those those skills and experience are certainly irreplaceable. Uh, so you traveled the country and served as Miss Rodeo America in 2019. Tell us about that experience and how it shaped you personally and at a professional level. Being Miss Rodeo America was truly the ride of a lifetime. A lot of girls say that, but there's no other way to describe it. Going from Washington State to Florida, uh, (laughs) New Jersey to California, Australia, and Canada, I made memories that I will cherish for the rest of my life. I got to experience the world uh, from the rodeo arena. And not just that, I made friends along the way that are friends for a lifetime. Being Miss Rodeo America truly changed the trajectory of my life uh, through the scholarship dollars one. It was something that I, I never expected to win. Of course, I'd always hoped and I prepared as best as I could, but being Miss Rodeo America seemed so, so far from achievable for me, uh, coming from those small town roots that I talked about. But uh, Mississippi was fortunate enough to have three Miss Rodeo Americas in less than a decade. So thanks to the inspiration from Kelly Jackson Russell, Miss Rodeo America 2010, and Paige Nicholson Bajeron, Miss Rodeo America 2014, those dreams looked a lot more achievable uh, because of the hard work that I saw those ladies put in and reap the success of it. 
uh, like I said, there's just so many things about that experience that that really I can't pinpoint uh, one specific rodeo or event that that made my entire year. It was truly everyone that I met, uh, every experience that I had, and I'm eternally forever grateful uh, for that experience. Those 365 days flew by. And I still feel so blessed to have had that opportunity to represent the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association and the Miss Rodeo America organization. Both of those organizations uh, did so much for me. And, and to be their official spokesperson and ambassador was truly a dream, a dream come true for me. Um, so after such a whirlwind of an experience, how did you start to sort out what was next for you? I have always been a checklist, calendar type of girl. I always had a plan A, a plan B, a plan C, a plan D, a plan E. I could, I could go through the whole alphabet. Uh, God has really directed my steps. And although I never knew exactly what I wanted to do with my life, uh, God has kind of opened the doors and, and led me to where I needed to be. I knew as soon as I was done uh, being Miss Rodeo America, I wanted to get straight back into the real world, straight back to a job, and Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation was the door that opened for me. They gave me a fellowship opportunity with their legal department, and I was so blessed to work under Kent Bloodworth and Lee Thorne, uh, under President Mike McCormick's lead. And it really shaped things for me. I, I saw myself loving what I was doing for the first time uh, and wanting to learn more, uh, wanting to become better first, uh, become more educated and build a bigger network right there uh, with the agriculture uh agriculture friends in the state of Mississippi, uh, specifically from the legal side of things. So after a public policy fellowship with them, I went off to law school at Mississippi College, which is I think two blocks, one or two blocks from the state capitol. So I was able to uh, be a registered lobbyist for Mississippi Farm Bureau as well as go to law school uh, and try to do both full time. Uh, it's not really possible, but don't tell my teachers I was working full time or <laughs> most of the time while I was in school. But uh, it, it really was the best of both worlds for me. Uh, I had scholarship dollars through Miss Rodeo America um, and what scholarships through Mississippi College and Miss Rodeo America didn't cover, Farm Bureau picked up. And I'm just forever grateful for them believing in me and now giving me uh, the opportunity to serve as the state affairs coordinator and uh, upon passage of the bar deputy general counsel, which uh, it is crazy to say coming from the girl that thought she would be an extension agent or a teacher, uh, but now walking the halls of the state capitol and, and getting to meet with legislators each day and, and talk to them about uh, rural Mississippi and farmers and ranchers it is truly so rewarding and I feel so blessed to be right here where I'm at. Absolutely. We obviously have incredible communication skills and are, are very intelligent, but what was the biggest learning curve that you experienced throughout law school? Law school gives you such a different mindset. Uh, I'm going to go back to my small town roots. I went to a small Christian private school uh, from K-4 until 12th grade. Uh, and so I, I had the mindset of, of what was taught and what my peers around me uh, were looking at, which is mostly agriculture. Uh, and so going to law school, I got to see different sides of things uh, and, and meet diverse people and, and go through DEI trainings and really get a better grasp of the world that I was living in and, and not have um, glasses on that that the way um, things look are not always as they seem. And so I really appreciate having that grasp on life. Of course, there's the legal side of things. Uh, writing skills are so important. I can read a whole book 
<laughs> easily within a couple hours now. My reading skills are, are really crazy. Uh, but overall, I think it just gives you such a great outlook. I, I see things differently and I, I see others, uh, you know, for who they are and, and not what what they come to the table with. And I'm, I'm so grateful to, to have that outlook on life and, and the experience that law school gave me. I think it did take a lot of my rodeo queen personality away, which is really sad. Um, <laughs> but I had to lose some of, some of my fun jargon and <laughs> charisma uh, to be a lot more serious in the courtroom. So <laughs> I, I definitely feel like I sound a little bit different and my presentations are definitely not as lively and fun as they once were. Well, there, there's always time to bring that back. <laughs> um, tell us what your day-to-day -day role looks like at Mississippi Farm Bureau. What I love about my job is that no two days are the same. I never know when I'm going to get a call from a member about an issue that they may have or a regional manager about something going on in a county or a legislator that pops into town and is like, hey, let's go to lunch or let's grab dinner or something. Uh, and we're always talking about ways we can make Mississippi better. Uh, that's what it all comes down to. So. My schedule never looks the same. Some days I'm in the office, some days I'm in the Delta, some days I'm on the coast, uh, some days I'm across the world. Uh, but it all comes down to how can we make farming and ranching and rural Mississippi better? Uh, and that is every day we're talking about some type of issue that we want to bring towards the legislative session. Uh, and Mississippi Farm Bureau is really cool at how we work. Uh, I would love to explain a little bit about Farm Bureau if that's okay. Absolutely. Okay. So Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation, a lot of people think we are just an insurance company. Uh, but rather, we are an advocacy organization. Over a hundred years ago, Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation was created uh, by farmers and ranchers that needed a voice in the state capitol uh, in Washington, D.C. When you're out working all day, 24-7, always on call, there's not always time to get to the capitol to talk to your legislators, your county officials, and so they started Farm Bureau as a way to meet and discuss the issues they were having. In Mississippi, we have 82 counties and we have a Farm Bureau presence in all 82 counties. So there's boards uh, in each county that meet uh, either monthly, uh, bi-monthly, it depends on the county, but they discuss issues right there in their county. They present policy that goes through our resolutions process and then if it uh, survives the resolution process it will be presented at our convention in December to be voted on and it will go in our policy book. That policy book is what I carry out or try to carry out at the Mississippi State Capitol and it goes to show you that the issues on the county level are being brought through this process uh, for Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation to carry out uh, in the state legislature year in and year out. And I, I love going to legislators and explaining these issues and saying, hey, um, Will McNair in Hines County has this issue. And our entire 180,000 uh, member family base thinks this is important. And I'm bringing this to you not as Taylor McNair, but as Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation because it is an issue that they have. It's so rewarding to get to uh, push uh, instrumental policy across the finish line at the state capitol and truly make a difference uh, each day. Absolutely. So in your various capacities, you've been at the forefront of advocating for farmers and ranchers um, in many different ways. From all of your experiences, what is one thing you wish the general public knew about agriculture? I wish they could see how advanced things are. We talk about rural broadband a lot, uh, and that's a huge issue, not just in our homes, uh, but especially in rural America where we need a workforce. Uh, Today, it's hard, it gets harder and harder to get a labor force in America. Uh, and 
the technology that we have that's able to accurately uh, plant and harvest and uh, set our tractors to, to drive themselves even is so, so important, not just for the efficiency of our farmer, but when it comes to the labor side of things, farmers need that help. The average farmer, I'm sure you've all heard, it is much higher than it's ever been the age of a farmer. And so they need more help on these farms. And I think that ties directly to broadband, rural broadband, getting internet access out to uh, our, our rural parts of the world. I could go on and on about uh, misconceptions about agriculture, but I think it's so important that we start with putting agriculture back in the classroom. We really got, we really need to educate uh, our youth. They are the future of this country and we're never going to stop eating. We're, we're going to continue to eat. And so it's important that we educate the younger generation and we encourage the younger generation to become farmers and ranchers. A big misconception is uh, that that it's not that it's not a viable career. And while it is a lot of risk uh, and, and there is a lot of uh, input that goes into it, uh, this is something that youngsters can can get involved in uh, at a young young age and, and grow with uh, but it's got to start at a young age it, it's hard to get into farming and ranching uh, once you get older but if we can start that at a younger age I really think that uh, we can turn that uh, number around of the average age of a farmer most definitely so on the flip side of things what is something that you wish farmers and ranchers knew about the legislative process your voice matters. Get out and vote. Uh, Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation does not endorse candidates, but we encourage every person to get out and vote because your voice truly does matter. Uh, we started a campaign called We Farm, We Vote. And all across the state, we're in an election year. Uh, there are We Farm, We Vote signs in cornfields, soybean fields, in the middle of uh, cattle, we call them cattle farms. A lot of people, I guess, out west call them cattle ranches. But uh, we have these signs everywhere uh, just to remind people that we are farming and we are ranching, but we do find it important to vote. And I hope that, that all farmers and ranchers uh, realize that their voice does matter and that it's so important to exercise that right to vote. Absolutely. So in looking out for the best interest of farmers and ranchers, what has been the most rewarding moment or time from your career so far? It's really hard to pinpoint just one thing. Each legislative session that I've worked with Mississippi Farm Bureau has been uh, really rewarding in a sense that there's always something that we can improve and, and help our farmers and ranchers with. What's really amazing is that Mississippi Farm Bureau has great relationships with our elected officials, uh, our legislators and our statewide uh, elected officials. And so uh, each day getting to know our leadership better and better and developing these relationships and, and seeing uh, how agriculture is touching their lives and, and seeing them want to uh, make changes in the state to help farmers and ranchers is really just so rewarding. Mississippi is really blessed to have great leaders, uh, great legislators that listen. We have a lot of farmers and ranchers in our legislature. And so uh, it's really just so rewarding to, to have people that understand. Not only do they talk the talk, uh, when it comes time to pass bills and legislation, uh, but but they walk the walk. They have chicken houses, they have beef cattle, and they understand uh, where we're coming from. And so those relationships uh, are something I'm really proud of, and not just with our legislators and statewide elected officials, but also our other ag industries in the state. Uh, we work really closely with the cattlemen's and the poultry, uh, cotton, corn, soybeans, all of their organizations. I could go on and on about the retailers. And uh, we just have a great relationship with all of our ag organizations in the state. And we are truly, uh, 
strong because we work together. And uh, I, I hope that doesn't go unrecognized in our state because uh, not all states have that type of bond with all of their ag industries. And I'm really proud that we do. Absolutely. So as you look at all the stepping stones to get to the present day, what is a piece of advice that you would offer your younger self? Don't rush things and trust the process. Uh, it's so easy at a young age to compare yourself to others and to wonder why you don't have everything figured out right in that moment. Uh, and I look back and I want to tell young Taylor, it's okay, just keep one foot in front of another and uh, work hard and doors are going to open and God's going to lead you where you need to go. I wish I wouldn't have put as much stress on myself. And, and I really would have just enjoyed the moments uh, that I had uh, growing up. I look back and I'm really proud of uh, the things that I did because I know it led me to where I'm at today. But I would definitely tell Taylor to uh, maybe not put so many things on her to-do list every day and, and just have fun. Absolutely. So as you look towards the future, what are some things that you would like to accomplish either on a personal level or on a professional level? Not to add to the to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really uh, blessed with where I'm at right now. I, it's hard to say. I, I don't really have anything uh, left to check off or, or do. I, I've tried my best not to add to that to-do list or fill up that calendar too much. I just want to uh, be the best uh, employee I can be, be the best daughter, be the best friend, uh, granddaughter. I've been spending a lot of time with uh, my family and friends, and I think that's what's truly important is, is making memories and um, getting to see those you love and be around them. There's no big uh, work plans or and no big uh, life plans. Just I'm really happy with where I'm at right now and um, just excited, like I said, for God to lead me to that, that next door, that next opportunity. Absolutely. Well, uh, that as someone who is in the thick of the to-do list stage, that's very encouraging to hear. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that we haven't, chatted about today that you'd like people to know? Well, I think we forgot to tell people that we're actually sisters. We're oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Yes, uh, we are proud Chi Omega sisters. So go Chi. Go Chi, Chi until I die. We just had a big day in Mississippi. So it was so fun to, to see all the Chi and uh, a, a Miss Dixie National Rodeo Queen. Uh, she just went Kayo, and so I'm like, no pressure. But there were two Miss Rodeo Mississippis that were Kayo. So, <laughs> so have fun for the next four years. But just let you know, you should probably run for Miss Rodeo Mississippi. Put a bug in your ear. No, that's awesome. Well, Taylor, thank you so much for sharing your story today. Uh, I see your story as one that just continues to build momentum, and I'm really excited to follow along. Thanks, Rebel, and good luck in Vegas. Thank you. Once again, that was Taylor McNair, law school graduate, Miss Rodeo America 2019, and state affairs coordinator for the Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation. As a reminder, seasons one and two of Breaking the Barrier are available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. New episodes are released every other Tuesday, with special thanks to the Rural Radio Network for their assistance in production. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.